Good afternoon. My name is Lisa Petty, and I am the pastor here at the Montrose United Methodist Church. Thank you for those of you who are joining us online as we stream virtually for you, family, friends. We come to honor Janie, Jane Smith, for the life she lived, which was big and abundant, the way she loved, who she was for each one of us, because we all carry with us different stories and memories and things we think of her. Things that she would do that would make us laugh, things she would do that would make us smile, and things when we would just look at her, our heart would melt. So we come today to honor her and to lift her to God, for God has already opened God's arms wide and said to her, well done, good and faithful servant, rest, rest. So friends, thank you for being here as we join together to honor Janie. I'd like to start with a scripture from Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 14. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant, and a time to uproot, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to tear down, and a time to build, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What do workers gain from their toil? I have seen the burden of God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and do good while they live. That each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all of their toil. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it, and nothing taken from it. Amen. Friends, we're going to sing an old and beautiful hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. If you would rise in body and spirit, our words will be on our screens.
Our second reading comes from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely, your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. Almighty God, your grace and your mercy are with us, for we can feel it. Lord, as we take time today to remember your servant, Janie, grant us your peace and your comfort. Lord, be gentle with our hearts. Hold us in your care. Lord, we grieve and we mourn, and yet we also give you thanks. We give you thanks for every minute we got to share with her. For the phone calls, for the times we sat in her living room, for the times she was able to come and be with us. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for her caring, her humility, and her strength. For we will not forget it. We will live to emulate it. Lord, help us to always give you thanks, even as we mourn this, our loss. And so we come as your disciples, and we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I would like to invite Vijay forward to give our eulogy and share some familial remarks. Thank you so much for being here with us to celebrate my mother's life. Um, on behalf of my sisters, Kimberly, uh, Alicia, and Vonda, we're very grateful for all of you, your friendship, and um, being great uh, family members to her and loving family members. Um, my mom, mother, suffered for several years. Uh, it, was, it was tough to uh, watch and go through, but she had an amazing buoyancy through that time. Um, uh, she was able to laugh at times. She was able to make jokes. Uh, she was still ordering us around <laughs> um, and sending postcards and letters and care packages. So I think that amazing buoyancy um, that she had through that um, is, is really an example to all of us um, that we can have that as well. And I think we'll hear more about that um, from our pastor and, and why that is evident, was evident in her life um, a little bit later. Um, but helping her through the suffering, I, I want to thank my brothers, uh, brother-in-laws, Mark, uh, Pat, and Alvin for all your love and support. I want to thank uh, you, you for having your families here and everybody who's here from your families and all of that support. I want to thank our cousins, the Bullers, for coming from Oklahoma all this way. Um, and uh, my, my mother's sister, uh, Beth uh, Clark, Auntie Betty, is here. She's been an amazing support over the years. Thank you, Auntie Betty. Um, and we want to thank uh, our Uncle Bill, uh, her brother, who was not able to make it 
He's a professional cellist, and his music will be, um, a special music that he picked out will be played for a special uh, remembrance slideshow that we'd love to share with you all at the end, as uh, right before we leave. So uh, we're excited to share that with you. Um, the real hero, though, in all this suffering, of course, if, if you've been around, our family has been my father, Van. He has uh, done an amazing work and care over her life the last several years. It's been very tough, and so we're, we're indebted to you, Daddy, and uh, thank you so much. You're, you're a true hero in this, and um, we, we can't thank you enough. He also wrote this eulogy that I'd like to share. And then I'm also going to be joined by my brother-in-law, uh, Patrick Cloutier, for some uh, memories that we would like to share from my sisters and various family members. Um, but, but first, we'll uh, go ahead and share with this with you. Um, Jane Janey Adeline Smith from Montrose, Colorado, was the first child of Elsie and Henry Cernoda. She passed away August 17th, just three days shy of her her 60th wedding anniversary. Janie was born in Oak Park, Illinois, and is a, of 100% Czech descent. Her grandparents were immigrants from Czechoslovakia. Jane was a precious artist and studied at the Chicago Art Institute beginning at age 11. She attended J. Sterling Morton High School in Cicero, Illinois, and during that time was crowned Miss Morton she, she has had many interesting outsider jobs in Chicago during those years, including working for an advertising agents, agency where she participated in think tanks. My mom claimed that the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile was her idea, <laughs> if you've seen that running around. <laughs> Upon graduation from Morton High, the, the faculty named her as the outstanding female student, and that was the largest high school in the state of Illinois. So. Quite an accomplishment. Jane next enrolled at the University of Illinois campus in Champaign-Urbana where she studied art. She was a social chairman of her dorm and a couple uh, male roommates called for a date. She thought the boys seemed interesting so booked the date with them for herself and a friend. Her friend's date was Van Smith, my father, and Van's roommate sub subsequently called Jane back for another date but she declined. Van then called for a date and she accepted. So his roommate situation became frosty from that point on, but then the Van and Jane relationship blossomed and resulted in marriage. Two children, Kimberly and Vijay, were born while the couple lived in Illinois. After Van's graduation in 1963, the family moved to western Kansas and two additional children, Alicia and Vonda, were born. Janie was a busy mother and homemaker with four children, yet found time to become active in the YMCA, Friends of the Zoo, and politics. She was a county co-chairman of the Republican Party and later was county chairman for a presidential candidate and several uh, gubernatorial candidates. A highlight of her life for many years was participation in her women's Bible study group. For exercise, she swam at the YMCA for several miles for her 40, 40th birthday as one of the key accomplishments. Janie and Van moved to Gunnison, Colorado in 2000 and enjoyed outdoor recreation, Rotary Club, and the Western State Athletic Boosters Organization. Life was interrupted when Janie developed severe health problems involving chemotherapy and dialysis, so they moved to Montrose in 2003 to be closer to the needed medical treatment. Janie received a miracle kidney transplant in Dallas, Texas, November 1, 2009 which ended the dialysis ordeal, but she also had to cope with progressed and with other COPD that progressed and eventually caused her death. Janie was very popular with her grandchildren. Uh, most of them are here, and uh, they, she was known as Gramsie. Janie is survived by her husband of the home, four children and their spouses, Kimberly and Dr. Alvin Inns, Vijay and Kimmy Smith, Alicia and Mark Westlake, Vonda and Pat Cloutier. She is also survived by 10 grandchildren and four great-grandchildren, her sister and husband, uh, Beth and Tom Clark, and brother and wife, Bill and Maria Cernoda. Bill is a professional cellist in Chicago and a cello music at the funeral, again, will be provided by him. 
We'd like to thank all the doctors, nurses, and medical assistants who treated her along the way. In particular, the family thanks Dr. John Lambert, who was instrumental in her recovery back when she was very sick on chemo and dialysis, and the prospects seemed bleak. Um, for me personally, you know, I'd like to say that my mother cared about what mattered most, and that was relationships. She was an example to all of us of, on what it means to be open, generous, and caring. I have to work across a broad spectrum of government, cultures, and communities, and I credit my mom for inspiring me to comfortably um, work with, uh, relationally with people and create shared value um, in these relationships. Um, we are, you know, she, you know, because of that, you know, I can look back and see how she never had a, uh, she never met a stranger. She, she talked to everybody and, and was very kind and, and it rubbed off on all of us as you'll hear. Um, I and we are very comforted that she trusted, though, speaking of relationships, in the most imperishable relationship that ultimately matters most, her relationship with her creator. She had a great assur assurance in the irresistible grace and love of Jesus for her. She consistently, surrounded, she consistently surrendered to his great care over her, over her, her family, and her friends. The trust that as we pursue him, he is working all things together for good. This week, she enjoyed that final surrender, that final handing over of her life in trust and in the loving arms of the one who matters most. And I'd like to cover a couple of um, special memories from my sisters, Alicia and Vonda. Um, she was an, an, such an incredible artist, and it showed in every aspect of her life. She was ahead of her time when it came to decorating, and her garden was spectacular, and our birthday cakes were works of art. I will never forget, this is my sister Vonda, my, seeing all of my birthday cakes, and in particular one that was made like a fort and uh, had little army guys all over it. <laughs> um, my, both of my sisters remember the wonderful tradition of my mom taking them to the zoo on the last day of school and letting them pick out a last day of school ring in the zoo gift shop. She was so patient while they poured over every single ring until they decided on the one that was just right. There's so many mem wonderful memories of her and the zoo. She was very much involved in animals and the zoo and, and served uh, you know, um, in various functions with the zoo. Grocery shopping with Mama was all, always an adventure. She knew everyone in the store. We couldn't walk down one aisle without her getting into a long conversation. It's a reflection of how much she was loved by so many the silver lining to this was that she would be so, di di so distracted that uh, my sisters could sneak cookies into the shopping cart and she wouldn't notice. <laughs> so, uh, but I know she was gracious in that she did notice at checkout, I'm sure, but she, <laughs> she let, it, let it go through. Um, my, uh, my oldest, our oldest sister, Kimberly Joy, um, had these memories and thoughts. Mama was such an incredible example to me of how to give to others. There was an impactful memory I have when I was around 12 years old. A lady in need was walking down our street and Mama went to her and started talking with her. Mama then came and got me saying we should go buy groceries and deliver them to this lady. I remember picking out groceries and the impact it had on my heart when we delivered them to the lady who was very, so very grateful. To this day, this has greatly inspired me to want to do these things for people. And I, and I know Kimberly is constantly doing that and active with serving others. Mama always had ideas for things we could give people, and she was so very creative. She also, in addition to the gift of giving, her generosity of hospitality was amazing. She, she also had the most beautiful gardens in the world. Um, Patrick, would you like to... Uh, Come forward, and, and then I'll, I'll uh, bring a final memory forward after that.
<clears throat> in case the live stream is working, there's three of my daughters in Texas wondering about this tie. <laughs> I forgot mine in Texas, and I let my father-in-law pick out one of his. <laughs> this, is, this is what we got. Jane Smith made my life richer. I had a mother-in-law like no other. She and I shared a love for shock humor, and she would jab at me, and I'd jab at her. That was going on for 35 years. I'd like to outline three of my dealings with my mother-in-law, to whom I'm so, so grateful. She raised my favorite person in the world. The first memory was a family trip to Durango, Colorado in August of 1988. It was time to go home, and Vonda and I were going the same way as Van, Jane, and Alicia as far as Pagosa Springs. We drew lots, or maybe Van just decided, that Vonda and Alicia would ride with him. <laughs> and I would squire Jane in my car. Vonda and I had been married for less than three months, and I'd known Jane for about three years. The one and a half hour drive was filled with Jane telling me that my new bride was an artist. I recall not getting in one word <laughs> in that 90 minutes. I just nodded my head. She insisted that I should never let Vonda go, let, let Vonda let go of her love of art. I had not known Vonda to be an artist. We never talked about it. We were just starting our marriage. The whole matter confused me and made me wonder what would life be like with a mother-in-law. <laughs> Vonda and I went on for the next 16 years raising our girls and centering our lives around them before I really started seeing the manifestation of her love of art. And after 33 years, Vonda's love of decor, texture, and antiques has bloomed. It's one of my great joys to support her love of art. Jane could occasionally drop nuggets of wisdom that seemed off the mark, but took years to manifest. Many, I think, are still manifesting. A little bit less than a year later, on August the 4th of 1989, Jane became Gramsci in our world when our Caroline was born. Gramsci loved the girls. She had a penchant for over-promising and under-delivering on walks. <laughs> the girls knew Gramsci to be the fun grandma and my mother, Nana, to be perhaps the more sensible one. They were used to laughing with Gramsci. Now we had a tough time potty training our Caroline. But one day, Gramsci put her on the toilet and poured a bit of water in the bowl behind Caroline. And then Gramsci immediately exclaimed, you did it. <gasps> she had not done it. <laughs> but the confidence she received from Gramsci sealed the deal. We were done with diapers for Caroline. It was a huge victory, thanks to Gramsci. My final recollection is indeed my last recollection of when we were together. It was last April. Vonda and I arrived in Montrose prior to going skiing. We endeavored and we did visit Montrose at least a couple times, Vonda maybe three or four times a year, and we spent a couple nights as we did just to get stuff done. We were in the family room of their home, and the moon was odd that night. Full, big, and a strange color. Van looked up the moon on his phone and found that it was the worm moon. He excitedly told us and read about the description in a most rapid cadence. Van's dialect had robbed him of the ability to say worm. It came out warm. This was the source of a lot of initial confusion. And when it was revealed that this was not the warm moon, Jane just laid into it. <laughs> now here's a guy 
that has showed 100% devotion for so many years is the vanguard of husbandry in my mind, who had earned a great deal of love and respect in return. He got little that night. <laughs> the overreaction and focus on this minor point was so over the top that it had all four of us in stitches. This was classic Gramsci at her unpredictable best. Fonda and I still laugh about it. That was my last evening with her. I had a mother-in-law that fit no mold. There was little predictability. She had no culinary skills. <laughs> there were mercurial moments. There was stunned silence. There were belly laughs and lots of love. There were wild stories and dubious memories. There were mmms when the food was prepared for her was good, and unabashed criticism when it was not. Finally, I, I'm, I'm convinced that our happiness is linked to our productivity in following God's purpose for us. Jane's health forced her purpose to change. Her world got small. In recent years, it was phone calls to her kids and grandkids to immerse herself in their lives and give them what appeared to be sage wisdom. I love her and I will miss her. And life is less colorful today. Thanks, Patrick. That was beautiful. I think we, we're, this is working out nice. I'm the, I think I'm the play-by-play -play guy and you're the color commentator, right? <laughs> it, oh, that, was, that was wonderful. Um, to finish the memories, uh, I'm, I feel so honored to read this to you all. This is from uh, her sister, Beth Clark, who is here, our aunt. Um, Auntie Betty, as we know, and so we'll finish with this one. Unlimited Canvas, A Remembrance by Elizabeth Cernota Clark. I will remember my sister Jane as a brilliant artist who swept through life brandishing a broad paintbrush, sometimes quietly, sometimes loudly, and sometimes with grand sweeping gestures, and sometimes with a lot of food coloring. As a child, I was I was a typical little sister, insisting I be involved in whatever she was doing. We were 10 years apart, so that plan didn't work out for her. Technology here, sorry. We were 10 years apart, so that plan didn't always work out for her or for me. Sometimes I had to just watch from the sidelines, and it was a pretty good show. Through the years, Janie's talents grew. She, her talents expanded. Her time at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago refined her style, and she loved those classes. Whatever her hand touched became beautiful, although she didn't always think so herself, typical artist. Jane loved fabrics and fashion, and as a teenager, she made many of her own clothes, mainly, I think, because she wanted to choose the fabric and make her clothes unique and well-tailored. Her sense of style in the 1950s was so advanced, in fact, that she earned notoriety for being sent home from school a few times for a skirt that was either too long or too tight or a blouse that was a bit too revealing. As time went on, she continued her passion for fashion design, but she also drew portraits, created clay sculptures, and excelled at watercolor and oil painting. Over the course of sev several sweltering days in August 1963, I watched my sister at the sewing machine making her wedding dress. She had designed it, of course. As a 12-year-old, I couldn't imagine what would come next. I just knew she was creating gorgeous cascades of lace ruffle that were somehow charting her future. Fast forward a decade or two, Jane loved painting prairie and mountain landscapes, designing posters for fundraisers, and creating elaborate birthday cakes. But her best work was a, a collaborative effort with her husband, Van, 
That work of art goes far beyond framed canvases and blocks of clay. It's on display today right here. The beautiful family she and Van created is, in my opinion, her finest work of art. It has a long title, but, there, but here goes. It's called Kimberly V.J. Alicia Vonda, Grandchildren, Great-Grandchildren, and All the Dogs. <clears throat> Amen. Thanks. Thank you, VJ. I've chosen Psalm 102, well, selections from it, to read to you next. Hear my prayer, Lord. Let my cry for help come to you. Do not hide your face from me when I am in distress. Turn your ear to me when I call. Answer me quickly. For my days vanish like smoke, my bones burn like glowing embers. My heart is blighted and withered like grass. I forget to eat my food. In my distress, I groan aloud and I am reduced to skin and bones. I am like a desert owl, like an owl among the ruins. I lie awake. I have become like a bird, alone on a roof. The Lord, he will respond to the prayer of the destitute. He will not despise their plea. Let this be written for a future generation, that a people not yet created may praise the Lord. The Lord looked down from his sanctuary on high. From heaven he viewed the earth to hear the groans of the prisoners and release those condemned to death. In the beginning, you, God, laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment, like clothing. You will change them. Amen. When I asked Van if he had a Bible of Janie's or a favorite devotional book, he and VJ both said, oh, yeah, there's this one we have been reading for her for the past couple days and that she liked to read, and it's one of my favorites, too. I think it's one of our church favorites, actually. It's a little tiny book called Jesus Calling. It's by Sarah Young, and there is this one page that is dog-eared, and it is also marked, and it's from just a couple days ago. Let me read you these words. I am yours for all eternity. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the one who is and was and is to come. The world you inhabit is a place of constant changes, more than your mind can absorb without going into shock. Even the body you inhabit is changing relentlessly. In spite of modern medicine's attempt to prolong youth and life indefinitely, I, however, am the same yesterday and today and forever. Because I never change, your relationship with me provides a rock-solid foundation for your life. I will never leave your side. When you move on from this life to the next, my presence beside you will shine brighter with each step. You have nothing to fear because I am with you for all time and throughout eternity. The Lord is steadfast. Even in our weakness and our pleas, the Lord has not changed from the beginning of time. Yet the Lord changes us. I found it beautiful that even though Janie did not grow up in a home that went to church often or at all, as Van let me know, that at his encouragement, she joined a church Bible study. And that's how she became active in the church. And that her relationship with Christ grew and grew. The Lord does not change, but the Lord changes us. 
The Lord places people in our lives that allow us to find Christ, even though it may have seemed impossible or a long shot. Like many, 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 far too many people that I know, her family had been hurt by the church. Her parents, sounds like before she was even born, and they shunned them. And so a place that is supposed to be filled with God's love and grace, when it does not show you love and grace, you don't tend to want to go there. And so they didn't very often. But God has a way. God, who does not change, changes us. The Lord filled Janie's days with Bible study, steadfast faithfulness. The Lord filled Janie's life with children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And the love of Christ and grace came to her through all of this family and the church families. And she then was able to give it out more and more. That's how the Lord's love works. It is cyclical. It just keeps going and going. Because the Lord does not change, but the Lord changes us. And as we remember Janie, which we will do for the rest of our lives, we can continue to change lives. We can continue to show love and grace to all people that we come in contact with, all people we cross paths with, because we remember Janie and we remember the Lord, forever unchanged and always changing our hearts, even from this life to the next. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we know you never change. You are the Alpha and the Omega, and you, Lord, have always been with us. Even before we were us, you are with each of us as we move step by step from this day to the next and from this life to the next. Lord, you never change. Your love is always unfailing. So we give thanks to you for your unfailing love of Janie, for the ways you continue to move in her life, the ways you have set forth this family to be your steadfast servants, the ways their love for this world will live on as they remember her. Gramsci, mama, wife, beloved, and your daughter, O oh Lord, that you have shared with us. And for that, we give you thanks. Amen. We have a slideshow we're going to share with you.
On behalf of the family, I would like to say thank you to each of you for being present today. My hope is that we have honored her well, we have done her justice, we have remembered Janie and the joy and love that she brought to each one of us. I have to share with you that uh, I shared with the family, but you really have to know the times I visited, the thing she was most proud of was you guys, was telling me all about the things you were doing. And I could not keep all of you straight, because there are many. The calls from the grandchild who would hike mountains and call her from the top. The adventures of the next school that one of you was going to. The wedding she couldn't wait to get to. Every single thing was about you. You are her legacy and her love. I hope you take that today and know how deeply she cared for each one of you. Friends, let's pray. Oh, Lord, may you continue to comfort us in our loss of Janie. Be with us in the coming days and months and years as we continue to mourn, but we remember the words of Christ who said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. And those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. Because I live, you shall live also. Oh Lord, we know that Janie was full of life. She knew what it was to live with joy and to live for you. And so we give you thanks for this time that we got to share with her. Even though it does not seem like enough, we will cherish each memory and each remembrance as we rejoice in the joy she brought us. May we live in your love and light, O oh Lord as we share her with the world. Amen. Friends, that concludes our service at this time. I'd like to invite you, if you'd like to, um, we will be going to Grandview Cemetery for a graveside immediately following this. If we have our pallbearers and Crippen Funeral Home will assist us. <laughs>